Hi, welcome back. This is Lieutenant Colonel Evangelista again. We're going to continue now with uh, problem S, 1133 from page 492 in the text, and we're going to use the textbook technique to, uh, to solve this problem. But before we get too far, we have a little bit of motivation from a guest speaker that's by my side. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Victoria. I hope you like this video about transshipment problems. Very good. So in case you're wondering, transshipment problems are one of Victoria's favorite topics to discuss. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll talk about this. So remember, we had this problem set up and uh, it has three uh, supply nodes, two transshipment nodes and three demand nodes. And it had this unbalanced situation at the bottom. Uh, during the last video, I described how we balance it by creating this idea of a, of a dummy node. So to reinforce this concept, the idea behind a dummy node is it's not actually any, um, you know, there's, there's, there's not truly 30 items in this dummy node. It's just, it's there to essentially trick the model into thinking that there's 30 that exist. The costs along the arc, arcs are going to be zero. So it's cost nothing to ship these imaginary items. But what it does is it allows you to balance out the, the demand and the supply. And as I had mentioned previously, that's important because what that does is that allows the, um, it, it simplifies the linear program. Um, and I think it also creates a bit more of a, of a compact and concise representation for you. You understand that the supply has to be balanced with the demand, you understand that you have to have equality constraints, um, and it's just a, it, I think it's a favorable format to use uh, when you can. The other other thing I'll mention too is in this case here we have a dummy supply node, but in the event that you have more demand than you have, <clears throat> I'm sorry, in the event you have more supply than you have demand, in that case you would actually have a dummy demand node, so you would just slide this over and it would have arrows coming into this dummy demand node um, and again that would just allow you to balance out the supply and the demand um, and it would um, once again have zero cost on any of the arcs. Okay so why don't we go ahead and get going with the Excel now so I'm going to transition to that. Okay so here's the Excel model and this is set up similar to what they um, use in the book where you have you know your supply sources um, shown here shipping to your transshipment sources and then your transshipment sources will so will, will um, ship to your demand nodes you'll notice I have the dummy node position down here and this is the the technique that I like to use when there's a dummy node um, that's a that's a supplier um, it essentially has bypassed the, uh, the transshipment and it is just going directly into the demand and for this, uh, as we had said before, to balance things out, uh, you're going to have uh, the um, dummy supply uh, of, uh, of 30 in that case. Okay, so how do we get started? Um, the yellow are your decision variables. The green is going to be the left-hand side of your constraints. Uh, red's the objective function, and gray is going to involve the balancing of the transshipment. I'll explain that in a second. So we'll go ahead and we'll leave the yellow alone. Those are just empty cells that have been colored uh, as decision variables. And for the green um, supply, it's just going to be very similar to what we've done before. We're going to sum the row, and we'll drag that down. Okay, for these gray cells, we're going to sum the column. Okay, this is just representing what's um, coming into Indiana. All right, and we'll drag that across so we get what's coming into Georgia. Now over here, we're also gonna we're gonna sum this row, and this represents what's going out of Indiana. This represents what's going out of Georgia, and then this summation here represents what's being shipped from the dummy node to any one of the demand nodes. And then we'll sum here. That's everything going into Virginia, Kentucky, Louisiana. Okay, these are our transshipment balance um, left-hand side. So this will be a transshipment uh, balancing constraint for Indiana, left-hand side, and for Georgia.
and what and this is where the gray cells come into play so what we have to stipulate is we have to stipulate that anything that comes into Georgia okay so it's gonna anything that comes into Georgia or I'm sorry comes into Indiana has to leave Indiana okay so that that there needs to be zero this 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 cell needs to be zero to satisfy our transshipment um, constraint and then we'll do the same thing for Georgia so anything that comes into Georgia has to go out of Georgia all right last item is going to be our um, objective function okay so that's going to equal the sum product of our decision variables here and the costs along the arcs plus the sum product of the decision variables here and the costs along those arcs and that's it so now we're set up so we will plug it in the solver data solver okay I'm gonna again this is this is from my rehearsal so I'm gonna just delete everything so you guys can see from scratch how it all gets set up okay so for the objective function we're gonna go ahead and set the objective function um, there it's gonna be a minimization the variable cells we're gonna highlight these cells these are decision variables comma to separate the two um, different arrays so that's our, our um, range reference for Excel to change okay and then our constraints okay so we're gonna have our supply constraints as we've had before okay we'll add that and we're gonna have our demand constraints okay go ahead and add that we'll have our transshipment constraints which are again those two cells there each one of those has to equal zero you can just type it in using that syntax that works and then remember our dummy variable a dummy variable has a unique constraint where this must equal 30 okay that's the way I set up that dummy variable constraint so we'll hit OK okay once again um, non-negative simplex LP hit solve okay and you can see we get the exact same solution um, that we uh, had for the uh, the previous problem uh, now you notice I, I still have the previous problem uh, shown on the uh, the other sheet uh, and it's it's an interesting comparison you can um, take a look at the two I believe that the decision variables are absolutely identical for these two uh, if I'm not mistaken uh, maybe just a slight difference here it looks like between 8 and 75 and um, let's just 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 to check it let's just see what happens here I'm gonna undo that Yeah, we actually have two very different solutions here. So let me um, let me try this one more time. So if we plug in uh, let's just plug this straight in here. Ah. Do the same thing with this. Yeah, so it looks like there's what you what you have going on here essentially is you have two um, two solutions that are both optimal, so you have multiple optimal solutions, which is fine. Okay, so I think that's going to wrap up this video. Um, sorry for the slight uh, delay there at the end, but I wanted to prove to myself that uh, there were in fact multiple solutions. Um, Ten zero four three is the uh, the solution. Um, so uh, good luck uh, with your transshipment problems, and I think. 
I think our guest speaker has one last thing that she wanted to say. Go Army! Beat Navy! All right. Okay.